Page 14, 76 trombones. This piece actually falls under the fingers pretty well if you use their fingerings. I would like to point out a few things and make a few minor little adjustments. I'm going to start with the right hand. I just want to point out a few trickery things for you to make sure you get them okay. Starting on measure 4. You notice again they're putting the measure numbers at the beginning of each line in little boxes. Uh, some people call them rehearsal numbers. They happen to coincide with the measure numbers so I'm just going to say measure 4. In this case measure 4 is the first measure of the second line on page 14. Watch the fingering in the right hand. It's a 2-1. It's fine just the way it is. Two measures later, you have the thumb on the G, cross over with the fourth, and you're fine. Now each time you get this little run going up, whatever it is, whatever the notes are, generally it's a 2-1, so just be, be aware. Just follow the fingering they have in there, you'll be fine. Over at the top of page 15, starting with measure 20, that's the first measure. What's the fingering? It's 5. Four, three. I like that. That's good. Measure 26. Five, five, four. Good fingering. See those notes all taken together? That's the extended position for the chord, and that is the fingering you want for it. So use the fourth finger, not the third. You have a choice on measure 20 something. You can decide what you like to do over on measure 28. They're saying a thumb on the A's. Well, you played a C the measure before, but you have a rest. You got, while your left hand's doing the eighth notes, you can move your right hand up. Or on measure 28, you can play those two A's, the first two A's with the third finger. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. Uh, you're here, the measure before your C, you're in this position. And I can go from here to here easily enough. I don't even have to look down. But from here to here, I probably have to look down to see where I'm going. It's up to you, but you can experiment and see. Starting with the measure before, you're here. See, I can do that fairly easily. On measure 34, I would recommend a slightly different fingering here. We want to connect the melody. The melody is what's important. That's the top notes. So starting with measure 33, the eighth notes. That's what's important. So what I would recommend you do on measure 34 is you play the first E and C, the E and C with 1-4, and then the F, D with 1 and 5, and immediately substitute the fourth finger for the fifth, and then you're ready for measure 35 with 1 and 5 on the G, E. So it would be that. And that connects the melody, it, you know, it, it lets you feel the melody also. In measure 35, you have the thumb on the G, and you're going to use it again on the C. But that's okay because it's between phrases, and we want a little silence between the phrase anyway. And so that works out okay. At the bottom of page 15, starting with the second measure, this measure 41, and just going through the rest of it. All those Fs. And the C and the G's. I would recommend this. For measure 41 on those three F naturals, do a 3-2-1. There's a 3-2-1-3, three, three, right? 3-2-1, three, and on the next measure, 3. Then on the two eighth notes, so it's a 3-1, a 3 on the F sharp, and then for the two eighth note F sharps, it's 3-2, and a 3 on the G. Then on the G's following that, I would do a 3, 2, and 3. Now you can go from here to here, okay, with same finger, because the high G is a staccato, 
and you get a, a rest to go down. So there's silence anyway. You... So one more time on the Fs. It's three, two, one, three, three, one, three, three, two, three, three, two, one, three. It works much better than their fingering when the piece goes quickly. And this is a rather fast piece. So try that and see what you think. Now watch out for the rhythm there because it'll get you. Starting at measure 41. 6 8 time, so I'm counting 6 beats. So the first in the right hand, the first 3 beats are rests. So it would be rest, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1. For the then you then measure 42, you have the dotted quarter note tied to an eighth note. That's a total of four beats. One, two, three, four. See all four. So you're gonna hold the F down for that long. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three. See, so watch that. If I play that a little quicker, it's this way. Starting with, well, I'm going to do both hands. See, so the, the left hand is just playing on the beat one and beat four, which is normal for six, eight time. It's one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four. It's like it's felt in two, and this is felt in two. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if I do the two hands together, the rhythm is this way. One, two, three, four, five, six. 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 <clears throat> Something like that. So what's the rhythm? It's not what you think it is. Make sure you tie over. If it's confusing you, take out the ties temporarily until you get it. what you probably want to do anyway. But put the ties back in and it changes it. So it's different. Page 16 is very much like what you've already had. Just the same kind of fingering things to look out for and whatnot. But I will point out uh, toward the bottom and then next to the last line it's measure 60. You have a G D. You're, the D is tied. You're going to hold it down. And then you play the F sharp with the second finger. And then the F natural in the next measure with the thumb. All the time you're holding the D down. And the last measure of the piece at the bottom of page 16. They don't show it here, but I'm going to suggest it. You have a dotted quarter note tied to an eighth note for a full four counts. Right? And then the left hand, you have a dotted quarter note and an eighth note slurred, okay? But in the left hand, the eighth note is a staccato. I'm going to recommend you play the right hand the same way, with the eighth note as a staccato. So you're in both hands the same time. In this piece, it works out really nicely. So I put a little staccato, a little dot, underneath the E, C in the right hand just so it can be the same as the left there. In the left hand, again a few tricky little rhythm and fingering things I want to point out. Starting at the top of page 14, the next to the last measure on the first line, you have a C and an F sharp. Third finger on the F sharp. Because you need the fourth finger for the F natural in the next measure, and then the 2-5. And then I measure 4, it's a 4-1. Right. Good fingering. Now on measure 4, make sure you hold that dotted quarter note down three counts only. So it comes up when the right hand plays the B. So it's here. Right there. It, the left hand comes up. On measure 5, the left hand is a B and an F-G. And then a B. Measure six, you're playing the B with that little finger or fourth finger, which up to you. But you contract your hand together and put your thumb on the C. Now 
again, on measure eight, it's a dotted quarter note. Make sure you hold it down three counts only. So lift it up when the right hand plays the B. Measure 13. There is a note here, but you don't need the note because you can tell by looking at the music. The square bracket right there, means thumbs can play both of those notes. This happens in other places too, you see it. On measure 18, that is a staccato C, and then down. Over on page 15, measure 21. I'm starting with measure 20 in the left hand, your F is with the fifth finger. And then two on the B flat, one on the A. Now they're suggesting oh, on these next few measures you're using the third finger to start. It's not necessary if you want to work out a slightly different fingering, that's okay too. You don't have to move your hand around that much. The right hand isn't really doing anything, so the left hand gets to show off a little bit is really what it is. On measure 24, it is kind of important that you use third finger on the G, because it prepares you for what's coming. Measure 25, and then 26. So, yeah, follow their fingering in there carefully, it works well. Now, on measure 29, I really don't like putting a thumb on a black note, but sometimes you kind of have to, and it's convenient. In this case, it's better to do that because of what's coming. Right. In the first ending, and then four on the next measure, that measure 31, and then uh, one five, and the watch out on measure 33. It's a G, A, B flat, B natural, because you're working your way up to the C. Watch out for that. For measure 36, this is the second ending, thumb on the B flat. I recommend you do a finger substitution and after you play it with a thumb, you put your third finger on it. Like so. Then for the next measure, you use your second finger, and then measure 38, thumb, and then measure 39, instead of a 5-1, I recommend a 5-2. If your hand's big enough, it's not big enough, then you can't. And then on measure 40, I recommend a 3-1 for the staccato F, A. Keep in mind there's no pedal here, and then on the measure 42, those are staccatos. And for those eighth note G's there in the last two measures, 3, 2, 1, 3. It's much safer than trying to do all those with the same finger. Especially when it's fast like this piece is. On measure 16, again follow the fingering they've got. You know, at measure 47, it's one, or it's the fifth finger, and then third finger on the F sharp. You've had this before, right? Just follow that fingering, you'll be fine. However, down at the bottom, last two measures of the piece in the left hand, the measure before, last three measures, you're starting with the thumb playing the F G. I would recommend you use your second finger on the C, and then you can go ahead and use the fifth finger on the G, and then put the thumb on the C. And that, and that, puts you, that puts you in position. So it's here, two, there's no pedal in this piece. You don't need it. Let the fingers do it all. People will automatically just pedal it. They'll do it. It's like, ugh, it's a whole different thing. You can experiment on your own because it just totally changes the sound. You don't need it. Let the fingers do the work. It's good exercise for you to make the fingers control everything and not rely on the pedal to, uh, as a crutch. 
people use it as a crutch. It's not supposed to be a crutch. Uh, in a few cases, yes, there's times when you have to use it to help you out. But in most cases, it's it changes the sound so much that you have to only use it when you need to. So, roadmap here. Well, you see the first and second ending on page 14. So we're going to we're going to take the repeat when we play it together. Then you have first and second endings on page 15. So we're going to take that repeat. And sure, we got first and second endings on page 16. We're going to take that repeat. So we're going to take them all. Notice the key signature changes. There's two of them. At the bottom of page 14, at the very end of the last line, you see the two flat signs being introduced. That's telling you the key signature is changing from C major, which is where we're starting in C major. Now we're going into F major, which has one flat. So all the B's are going to be flatted on page 15, unless they have a natural sign. Then when you get down to the bottom of page 15, you see the natural signs where the B's, the flats were. That tells you they're erasing the flats, and now we're going back to C major on page 16. They can do that, you know. I think that's about all I had to say. Again, bring out the melody, do the phrasing, which we can certainly do since we're not using the pedal. We can do that, right? I should demonstrate the melody. I'm having a little problem with my electronics that I'm using here. It's adjusting the volume automatically, and I can't make it stop. It sounds much better real in, in here where I'm just listening to it without the electronics. For instance, we want to hear the melody here, and so if I play it like a lot of people play it, without, you know, everything's the same, it's that. Something like that. But if I play it and bring out the melody, it's that. finding the electronics are amplifying the bass notes too much. So on these videos I'm doing, I'm a little disappointed that the volume level on my left hand is as loud as it is, because it really isn't that loud. Really, it's not. Let's try this out. It is in 6-8 time, but I want to feel it in two. One, two, one, two. Right. But we're going to go slow because all we're doing here is just checking the notes. You can find all kinds of recordings of this. So we just want to verify you have the notes and in order to do that we have to go slow enough for you to hear them and compare them. You know, are we playing the same notes at the same time? I put the metronome on 100 but it's beating eighth notes. So it's like at the beginning of this piece. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one. I think that'll give you time to hear the notes, and you should be practicing it that slowly anyway when you're learning it. And then after you get the fingers in the right notes, then you gradually speed it up. If you just take off trying to do it fast, you're going to have all kinds of mistakes and you'll never fix them. That's a very common mistake people make. So, it has a three beat pickup. Remember we're counting eighth notes? So I'm going to give us three counts and then we're going to come in. So go ahead and put your hand here, the right hand. Left hand. All right. One, ready, go.
in position. I'll just give us three counts and we'll begin. Four, ready, go. Six. Six. 